What's up? I have an iPhone 11 here with no backlight. Um, I don't know if I've done one of these or not before, but um, I'm gonna kind of show you guys how to how to um, how to fix the backlight on this. And this this happened after a screen repair. So um, okay, so here's the XW tools. Let's see. Um, so these right here are the two. Well, these are this is the LCD connector, this is the digitizer connector here. Um, and as you can see, it's a it's actually a dual layer logic board. So it's two logic boards sandwiched together by a middle uh, interposer. Okay, as you can see here. So you really have to be careful with it because you don't really want to use heat. Uh, otherwise, the the two sections are gonna are gonna uh, separate. Then you'll have other issues. Okay. Um, I mean, it's it's not it's not the worst thing to have them separate, but to try to put them back together and deal with all that garbage, you don't really want to deal with it, basically. Okay, so let's take a look to see what's going on here. All right, um, let's see if I can focus. All right, so I have two logic boards here. Okay, one is my the one I'm working on, and then the other one is just uh, one that I have as a donor. Okay, and as you can see right here. Um, it's two logic boards. You can see that it's two logic boards. Okay, I took this chip off actually to use it for something. Um, and uh, there's actually a sh supposed to be a shield here, and this is where the backlight components are. Okay, this is the LCD digitizer connector, um, or maybe it's the other way around. Let's see what is it? Yeah, it looks like the. Yeah, it looks like the bigger one is the LCD connector, okay? So it would put, it would make this one the LCD, this one's the digitizer, okay? So let's, um, okay, so let's go to the real board that we're working on first. And so in order to test it, you want to diode, put your multimeter into diode mode. If you know how to do that, just Google it. And the backlight, the backlight pins are these six, I believe. Let me just double check real quick. Yeah, it's these six right here, okay? So big connector on the right side, small connector on the left side. Um so this would be cathode, anode, cathode, and cathode, anode, cathode. Okay, so in the iPhone eleven there's two backlight systems. And the anode lines are the ones that uh power up the, the backlight, okay, and there's two of them. So for the cathode, your diode mode should be 0.616, and then for the anode, it should be like 0.52 or something like that, 0.53, and then same with this one, 0 0.61, 0 0.61, 0 0.53, 0 0.61, okay? So in this case, both these are OL, which tells me that probably the filters are blown on these two things, on these two systems, okay? So now if we go to back to ZXW tools, we'll see that um, they're not labeled yet, but I imagine that they probably will be at some point. Um, so anode right here, and then you see there's a filter here which leads to the coil, the diode, and then the backlight IC. Okay, so most likely this filter is blown, and then we'll go to the other anode line right here. And this is the other filter that's most likely blown. Okay, so the challenge right now is really getting this shield off. Um, so you have the shield here, okay, that is... Basically, just you know, it's held on, held on by a, um, by some solder, okay. And there's really no hole to like kind of poke through to like lift it up or anything like that. So it really kind of sucks. Um, and then if you use heat, you're gonna like do the separation, and and, and board's gonna warp, and you're gonna have uh, lots of fun trying to get this thing sandwiched back together, which is not that much fun, okay. So here's my here's my other board here that I've been working on. Sorry. I'm not sure if you're able to see that or not, but anyways, here's my donor board here, and I've already taken the shield off, and um, as you can see, you know, there's like a little bit of a gap here that you can kind of like maybe stick something in to try to lift it up. Other than that, you you know, I see, I think I initially I chipped this chip right here, so that really sucks, and uh, and anyways, so I think my plan for for the one that I'm working on is to try to like poke a hole here and then just just use brute force to rip this. Rip this shield off, okay. So 
looking at this right here, I really just want to, oh, actually, is there a hole? Oh, there's a hole here. Okay, cool. So there's holes here, which is great, because I can just use my, so I just got these cool pliers right here, and uh, they're really sharp. They're better than those stupid Hakka ones, and um, the Hakka ones are just a little bit flimsy. So what I'm going to do is, since I know that there's a hole here, I'm just going to, so I just need to make sure that the hole is there. Okay, so if it's like this, then the hole is going to be like right there. Okay, so I'm just going to poke through here and see if I can break it off. Break this shield off. The shield is not really required anyways, really. Okay, so there you go. No damage done. Um, and I think, I think, I mean, what I've been doing with the XR and the, any of the, uh, basically the XR, yeah, uh, basically just using brute force to take the shield off. Because with the XR, um, you know, you run into problems where you overheat, uh, overheat some chips and you end up messing up the service or something like that, one of the chips. So that's why you can use heat, but I think, oh, damn, did I just, okay, good. Just need to make sure that I don't chip any of these glass component, glass chips here, otherwise I'm going to have to replace them. So, so anyways, I'm just going to like root strength it and just use my tweezers here or my uh, pliers here my micro cutters and just start ripping them apart and hopefully it'll just kind of come up and I won't have any like major issues you know I mean this thing is I think I think it's okay to rip it I think I think I think yeah just be careful just be careful I mean I don't know I don't know what else to tell you just be careful and you know, you can look at you can look at my board right here just for reference. You know, you get a glass diode here, which you don't want to jack up, which I might have been pretty close to jacking up already. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so now you can see we're getting closer. So there's one filter right there. And maybe I'll just leave part of this board here. And I think the other filter is on this side right here. So I'll just be very gentle here and just kind of rip it. Yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do. Just be careful. The, the less I have to do, yeah, there you go. So there you go. So there's one, and then there's two. Okay, so I'm just gonna, oh shit. Okay. I think it's okay. I think that's just ground. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm just gonna cut this now, and then I'm just gonna put some capped on on it after. Sometimes the shard also cuts in the flex cable, so you definitely wanna be careful with that. Make sure you have everything. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to replace these two filters, uh, and then we'll go from there, okay. Hey Google, turn smoke on. So let's get a little bit of flux. Turn your fume extractor up. So there's Uno. I'm not even going to test it, because I, I, they, they already look blown, so I mean, I don't know. I don't know why people still don't... Um, I still don't understand why they don't disconnect the battery before doing this kind of stuff. I just don't understand it. <laughs> Alright, so what I like to do is I just like to actually like to use my tweezers here, my really JBC tweezers, get put a little just a little bit of flux right, and then just make sure the end of my tweezers are have a bead of solder on them. Just enough, and then and then I keep them closed and then I'll just kinda of go like this. And hopefully I'll tin it tin it just enough so that I can put that component down without having to worry about it there being a cold joint or something like that you know but it doesn't seem like it's sticking to the end right now so well that's not good okay let's let's see if I can use my uh these bent ones maybe this is better there you go that's better so I changed my mind. For this one, I'm going to use the bent, and just 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 tin end of your thing, just enough. You really wanted to see a nice little thing in there, just a nice bead of solder, tin the pads. You really just want to tin the pads, but I'm having a hard time. Uh, that sucks. Okay, let's put a little more flux. Maybe a bigger ball of solder at the end. Make sure you don't mess up that diode. Class diode. 
So I'm still not having much luck. It's just not going to the end of it for some reason. It's not holding at the end. There it goes. Okay, so that's a properly tinned pad right there. Let's do this, this one too. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I think I'm going to use the iPhone uh, 7 or 8 or something like that. That, that looks like a that looks like a resistor actually like a zero zero ohm resistor so um, so the one that used that is an iPhone 8 plus yeah so that's that's what I'll use okay I'm gonna use an iPhone 8 plus resistor which is zero ohm basically zero two zero one uh, resistor okay because it looks looks about the same it makes sense and if you're and I guess maybe I'll update the website or something like that with the iPhone 11 backlight you know, filters slash resistors whatever you want to call them that yeah, fits well too look at that okay I feel like I do I have a video I don't think I have a video on this actually but I did fix an iPhone 11 a while back but it was it had a short I believe okay so let's see if I can get a little closer Sometimes you get a little closer and it's a little bit easier to work with. So I just want to make sure there's no bridges or anything like that. I just want to do this as clean as possible. And I guess I could just lay it on the side like this, but this is the right way to do it. Alright, perfect. Alright, number two. And then just and then, you know, whatever. Not a whole lot to it, my friend. Well, this is not really working too well. Let me see if I can stick this little this tip right here since it's a little bit thicker. Maybe get a little bit better solder on it. And I can't really tell. Yeah, sometimes if there's too much solder, then it's gonna like bridge on the bot below it, you know. But I don't think this is the case. So now what I'm gonna do is so now that I have the filters in place, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can diode mode it again. See if I can get some correct values for them. So now I'm getting 0.48 and then 0.488. It should go back up to about 0.53, I think. I think it's just probably just a little bit warm right now is my guess. Um, and then that's really about it. Um, so you really, you really just want to make sure you don't have any sharp edges here. You really want to make sure that, you know, there's, there's like this black uh, tape right here down here that kind of prevents the, um, the shield from shorting out of the components below. So you basically just kind of want to make sure that all these are, you know, okay, you know, basically. I mean, you don't want any, any jagged edges prop, popping up to, like, short something out or, like, cut the, cut the cables. You know, on the iPhone 8, if, you do, if you're doing a TriStar repair um, and you, you kind of cut the shield away to... If you kind of cut the shield away to, um, you know, fit, get get access to the backlight, sometimes they'll like dig into your charge port, and then you'll have weird charging problems, and you'll be like, "What the hell is going on with my, um, with the charging?" You know, and it'll drive you crazy. And the only way I know that is because, uh, well, you can kind of figure it out. You can kind of figure it out. All right, so uh, I think, I mean, it's not too sharp now. And it doesn't look like anything like touching any of the capacitors or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like reinforce this mother. I'm just going to put a little cap down on it. Put a little cap down on it.
I'm going to triple layer it. Triple layer the cap on. Okay, triple layer the cap on. And then I should be good, I think. Maybe I'll quadruple layer it just because I don't want to throw this away. Okay. I think that's fine. Oh, well, this one's a little bit long on the side. Definitely don't want that. So I guess I'll maybe I'll just trim this a little bit. Trim this mother. You don't want excess stuff. Okay. Trim that. And then get rid of this. Okay. I think everybody's happy after this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this back on and then uh, test it. Okay. Sit tight. Alright, let's try this out. See if it works. Hope it works. There we go. Alright, so we got an Apple logo. As you can see. Uh, should be good because I diode mode it both sides and they were both good. Anyways, um, I'm, I'm just going to like say this prepare is done right here because I need to get booking here. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. That's how you do an iPhone 11 backlight filter repair. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm about to delete that. I just want to say thank you for watching our videos on YouTube. Um, you know, when I started micro soldering about three or four years ago, probably about three years ago, um, I started because I ended up breaking someone's phone during a repair. Yeah, this was back in the days of the iPhone 5C, and as I was disconnecting the battery, I accidentally pried off one of the little components next to the battery connector. So my options were to try to try to fix it or to buy buy the customer a new phone and and that's kind of what started this journey. Well, fast forward three years later, um, we have a website now, microsoldering.com, and we also have an online training course. Um, it's ninety nine ninety nine if you buy it through our website. And we go over just about everything that you need to know to get started on your micro soldering journey. Um, it's uh, kind of sectioned out into about four parts. And uh, the first part, we just kind of go over all of the basics and tools, how to use diode mode, um, and what kind of tools and equipment to buy and stuff like that. The second part, we talk a little bit about ZXW tools. And in the third part, we go over four of the most common repairs. Let's update this. Should be four common measures. So it's basically no touch, no backlight, no power, and we just added a section for audio IC on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. And then the last part is data recovery, no boot, and just kind of a very basic um, uh, discussion about data recovery. So if you want to buy it, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, shop, and then you'll come to this. Um, this uh, page right here. Just click on Buy at Udemy, and that'll take you to Udemy, where our course is hosted. Um, and you can even preview some videos of the course and see if you like it or not. And right now, it's we're at four and a half hours, and we're adding to it um, as much as we can. So uh, just make sure you go through our website. Otherwise, the cost is a little bit higher. All right. Thanks for watching.